All right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to open up by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who real well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the Hopi Lick. And uh, pretty much uh, today's lesson is going to be another installment of a uh, scripture of the day, in which today, uh, the scripture of the day that was given to me by one of my Bible apps is uh, the book of uh, John, uh, chapter 15. Verses 12 through 15. So let's go ahead and grab that in the blue letter. The book of John, chapter 15, verses 12 through 15. And these are words in the red letter. So these are the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. It says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Right. And ask me, What is love according to the scriptures? All right. Go back a chapter. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. All right, once again, the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So ultimately, if you love the Lord and if you love your brother, guess what, man? You're going to keep the commandments, man. You know, because the scripture also says this in the book of uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 8. It says, oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So ultimately, love according to the scriptures. Okay, is the fulfilling of the law, right? It says, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So ultimately, hey, if you love the Lord and if you love your brothers, guess what, man? You're not going to do, are you not going to commit any of these transgressions against Yahweh by Shemi or against any of your brothers? Because ultimately, if you do such, all right, guess what? Then that means, all right, that you hate the Lord. Because, hey, what did, what did, um, what did, what did the uh, uh, prophet, what did the Heavenly Father through the prophet Nathan, all right, tell David when he committed his transgression? All right. In the book of uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 12, and uh, it's the point I want to get. Um, verse 9. It says uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 9. And this was uh, the Lord uh, speaking through the prophet Nathan to King David after David had committed adul adultery. It says, uh, wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain them with the sword of the children of Ammon. But the point I wanted to get was. At the top, it says, what? Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? So when you do things contrary to the law, of and commandments of Yahweh, Bashmi, Ashai, blatantly, because ultimately, hey, there's some things, you know, that we can't keep, right? But the laws that we can keep, all right, guess what, man? We ought to keep them. So if we if we blatantly break those things, that shows what? Ultimately, that shows that uh, we hate uh, the commandment of the Lord, man, all right, to do evil in his sight. If we blatantly do wickedness, man, Guess what? That shows that we hate the commandment of the Lord, right? And we don't want to be among those that hate the commandments of the Lord because what the scriptures say in Proverbs 13 and 13, uh, he that despises the word shall be destroyed, man. Okay? But um, that's just, just as a quick point I wanted to get. Jumping back to uh, Romans chapter 13. I'll start at verse 8 again. It says, O no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And once again, ultimately, love according to the scriptures is the fulfilling of the law. It says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So ultimately, if you love your neighbor as yourself, guess what? You're not going to or commit any of these things listed above against your neighbor, which ultimately neighbor, our, our neighbor is a fellow Israelite, right? Verse 10, it says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfilling of the law. So ultimately, that's how we love one another, all right? By not, not committing adultery against another brother, not trying to kill another brother, all right? Not trying to steal from another brother, not bearing false witness uh, against another brother. You know, pretty much not transgressing or sinning against another brother. That's how we show love amongst another, right? And then what we got, uh, which also that's also part of brotherly love, right? But ultimately, what's also part of brotherly love, man? All right, taking brothers, taking care of brothers whenever they need help, man. All right, being there for brothers whenever they need help. 
right? The book of um, uh, Romans chapter 10, excuse me, chapter 12 and verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Let's get a couple of these words. All right. Let's see what brotherly love says. It says, um, um, love of brothers or sisters, brotherly love in the New Testament, the love which, uh, Christians cherish for each other as brethren. Um, let's see. All right, let's grab something else. Because we already explained what love is according to the scripture and also that's fulfilling of the law, right? Uh, let's see what a uh, kindly affection it says, or ki kindly affectioned. What so like you? Ki yeah, kindly affectioned. It says, um, let's see. It says, uh, definition two: loving affection, prone to love, loving tenderly. Uh, let's see. That's about it, cause you know, you know, yeah, it was speaking. You know, the definition was speaking of you know, you know, uh, mutual love, parents, children, wives, and husbands. But pretty much, you know, we're dealing with the brother here right now, which is why I didn't get those definitions. Um, I see preferring. It says to go before and show the way, to go before and lead, to go before as a leader. It says to lead the way for others, man. All right, how do we lead one another? By keeping by keeping uh each other, all right, uh, uh um, by uh, uh Salaki, forgive me. We lead uh, uh one another, all right, with the scriptures, man. You know, because ultimately, the scriptures that's a guideline, all right, on how to love one another and ultimately how to walk in our day to day life, man. You know, so um, Romans twelve and ten again, it says, be kindly affectioned one to another, uh, with brotherly love, and honor. Preferring one another. Let's read that in the NLT. It says, um, "Love each up, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other." All right. So that's it. So that's it on the Romans the twelfth chapter. Um, and let's grab this in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter twenty-two, and um, beginning of verse thirty-seven. It says, "Yahweh shall I said unto him." Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with, and with all thy soul, excuse me, and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And ultimately we, we read, all right, in Romans the 13th chapter, or how you will love your neighbor, right? Or a fellow Israelite, which ultimately what? You wouldn't commit adultery, or you wouldn't steal, you wouldn't kill, you wouldn't bear false witness, you wouldn't covet. So on and so forth, man. It says on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, man. You know? So also, hey, hey, this is all connected, man. You know, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, all right, they're men and the law. They're all connected, man. You know, because ultimately, once again, the way we show love to one another, another, right, is right, is by what? Keeping the commandments among amongst one excuse me, Salakia. Keeping the commandments amongst one another. Okay? So uh, jumping back to uh, John the fifteenth chapter and uh, verse thirteen, it says, "Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends." Ultimately, that's what our Lord Yahweh Shai did for us, man. He laid down his life so that, or well, ultimately, we could be brought back into good graces with the heavenly Father Yahweh. Now. All right, like the Lord just said in verse 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And guess what, man? Well, as a matter of fact, let's read on verse 14. It says, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So ultimately, the Lord laid down his life for his friends, right? And also, the Lord just said that we're his friends. So ultimately, there's some of us that's going to have to lay down our lives for the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? And how do we know that? <laughs> Uh, let's grab a couple of scriptures. The book of uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, Sirach, chapter 4, verse 28. It says, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So, awesome, hey, and we're commanded to strive for the truth unto death, man. I mean, it continues to do this work, man. 
and do the things that's pleasing to Yahweh Wash me Shai, even if it brings us to excuse me, even even if it brings us to death, man. Because ultimately hey, there's nothing. All right, in this current life that we live, man, worth living for, man. All right, the only thing we got is this truth. But outside of the truth, man, there's nothing worth living for. You know, waking up in captivity every single day, having to bust our asses for the white man. You know, just barely getting by. But, hey, in kingdom, man, we going to be good. You know, we going to be good. But uh, Sirach, or Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 28 to strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So ultimately, as long as we strive for the truth and continue doing what we're supposed to do in his ministry, the Lord's going to fight for us, man. Right? Not concerning, all right, the fact that, you know, there's going to be some of us that have to um, uh, die for this truth, right? The book of um, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, it says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and the word of the Most High, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. So ultimately, you're going to have those who, who die, all right, <clears throat> for the testimony of Yahweh Shai and the word of the Most High. Why? Because ultimately, they're not going to worship the beast, which ultimately the beast, all right, is what? The ancient Roman Empire coming back in the form of what? NATO, EU, and America, right? It says neither his image, meaning not submitting to his, um, to, 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 to the order, all right, that this, that this, uh, beast is trying to set up. It says neither had received his mark, meaning also they're not going to take the MOTB. And due to them not taking the MOTB, guess what, man? They're going to have to, uh, be beheaded, man. You know, but ultimately, hey, that's, a, that's a sign of their faith, right? That's them. Laying down their their lives, all right, for the testimony, for the witness of Yahweh Shai and the word of the Most High, all right. We we read that we we read uh, how our Lord Yahweh Shai said what that ultimately there is no greater love that a man hath for his friend than to lay down his life for that man. Roughly paraphrasing, and that's what them that's what certain men of the Lord, all right, are set up to do, man. All right, as we approach the end, all right, in these end times, man. I right, when that uh, uh when the MOTB is presented before them, it says um. And they lived and reigned with the Shai a thousand years, man. That's in the kingdom, man. You know, soon to come. You know, but point being, hey, there's going to be those all right, who, who have to lay down their life for this truth, man. You know, once again, just like our Lord Shai laid down his life for us. All right. And ultimately, that led us to being, that led us to be brought back into good graces with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right, as well as us receiving this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Just like Shai laid down his life for us, hey, some of us are going to have to lay down our lives. But not all of us, right? Because what the scriptures say this, okay? Um, let's see. Matthew 16 and 28. Uh, once again, these are words of red letters. So these are words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. It says, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So ultimately, there's going to be individuals all right, of the faith of the elect all right, who are not going to taste of death all right, in, in, in the hour of temptation, man. Okay, when all hell is breaking loose, right? And also when the hour of temptation falls upon the whole world and, and everybody's uh, introduced. It's lucky. And everybody's introduced with the C-hip. Ultimately, not, not every member of the elect is going to die. Right? You're going to have some martyrs for Yahweh Shai, but not every member of the elect is going to die, man. You know, uh, a, a, a lot of us, you know, Lord will be that elect number. Or a lot of us, hey, like like Lord, like our Lord Yahweh Shai said, hey, those that keep the word of his patience, or he's going to keep them from the hour of temptation. All right? And, and, hey, even if we got to go to the chopping block, man, you know, that, that's a form of deliverance in itself, because at the end of the day, if we die for the truth, that means we're going to be the first ones, all right, in the chariots when our Lord Yahweh Shire returns, man. You know? So, hey, you know, we're going to have, we're going to have martyrs amongst the elect, and then you're going to have those that are not martyrs, man. You know, who the Lord is going to preserve, man, and keep alive, right? But, um, uh, let's also grab this in the book of, uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. And once again, this is our Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. 
It says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ultimately, this devil is going to Esau, Edom, so called white men. So when the hour of temptation falls upon the whole world, and those that refuse, uh, there's going to be those that refuse to take that mark. All right, guess what, man? All right, we're going to be cast into prison. That we may be tried, like the scripture goes on to say, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, man. So ultimately, even if we got to die for it, man, and the Lord is faithful, man, and he's going to keep his promise. The Lord told us to be faithful. He said, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, man. Meaning, hey, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he's going to give us that literal crown, and ultimately eternal life, man, along with salvation, man. All right, and ultimately, that's going to... You, you laying down your life for the testimony of Yahweh Shai and the word of the Most High, that's going to show, all right, your great faith that you have for Yahweh Bashem Yashai and, and, and the amount of love you have for Yahweh Bashem Yashai, right? Like we read in John, okay, <clears throat> 15 and um, 13, it says, greater love hath no man th than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And once again, our Lord Yahweh Shai did that for us, man. Our Lord Yahweh Shai did that for us, right? So ultimately, those, you know, the men of the Lord, those who are slated or ordained to be martyrs, and guess what, man? Those who are ordained to be martyrs, they are going to, to, to make it through, man. All right, and them laying down their lives for this word, guess what, man? That's going to show how, how, how great their love is for Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, right? Verse 14 Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth or doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So ultimately, hey, those who, you know, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, I reveals his mysteries to. And guess what, man? They are considered friends are of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. And what does the scripture say? In the book of uh, Amos, chapter 3, verse 7, it says, uh, Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So ultimately, hey, knowing that the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, they reveal the secrets unto their servants, the prophets. That's Guess what, man? That means that they consider, okay, um, they consider the prophets friends, man. All right. Was not, uh, was not Abraham known as a friend, right? Slack you. This is uh, James chapter 2, verse 23. It says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed the Most High, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of the Most High. Let's see what that word friend means. See if there's anything uh, special in uh, that definition. It says, uh, Philos. It says a friend to be friendly to one, wish him well, friend associate. Uh, let's see. Now, pretty simple definitions, but you know, ultimately Abraham, right? He was considered our a friend of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Right. And we understand according to scripture. Right. And was Abraham not a prophet? All right. Genesis. Chapter 20 and. Um, let's see. We'll start at verse four. It says, but Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, would thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself, said he is my brother, and the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, innocency of my hands, have I done this? And the most high said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore this man his wife. For he is a prophet. And also that he, that the Heavenly Father is talking about, is Abraham. Right? And his wife being Sarah. Let's read that again. It says, Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee. 
and thou shalt live, and if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are dying. So ultimately, the point I want to get was that Abraham or was known as a prophet and also a friend of Yahweh Bashmi Hashai. Right now, when we read John the 15th chapter again, all right, in verse 15, right, it says, Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my father have I have made known unto you. And we read in Amos 3 that what is true, the Lord power doeth nothing, but he revealed his secret to his servants, the prophet. All right, so ultimately, A, us having these mysteries, us, all right, us having the understanding of this truth, guess what, man? Just like Abraham, we're considered friends of Yahweh Bashmi Hashai. Okay? And now that I think about it, I'm going to probably change this uh, lesson to open form slash uh, scripture today. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, you know, I was all over the place. But you know, nonetheless, I pray that this lesson came out edifying unto the body. I'm going to close out right here. I pray that you were edified and I pray that you got something out of this. And without further ado, I'd like to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who rule well and preach his truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hope of your luck. And Lord, as I see in the next lesson. Till then, Shalom.